Hey YouTube, what's up? C4 here. I just thought I'd make a quick video to show off my uh, home setup, the environment I work in. Um, my full time job, I am an IT consultant uh, engineer, so I have my own business and I work for myself. Massive Apple fanboy, as you can probably already tell. Um, just thought I'd run through everything and uh, explain my setup and how I've kind of customized it to what I like and uh, let's go through it. Okay, so first of all, I'll start off with my uh, MacBook Air uh, 2014, so it is the latest and greatest. This machine, hands down, kicks anything else's ass, anything else. I don't care what anyone says, Apple make the best stuff. They make the best hardware and they make the best software hands down, like, check this thing out. It is so thin. Awesome piece of hardware. Uh, basically, this is my everyday, my run around. This is what I take on site when I'm working. And uh, awesome machine. Second of all, uh, iPad Air, fairly standard issue. Just got a, my study lamp. So as you can see in the background, the integrated Chinese, I also study uh, Mandarin. So I'll be making some videos regarding the Chinese stuff and just some how-tos and some basic stuff to get uh, around with your uh, simple Chinese stuff. So, uh, now here I have my 27 inch iMac. Um, this is a pretty old iMac actually. It's a late 2009. It's still a core i7, but it only came with eight gigs of RAM. So what I ended up doing was I bumped it up to 20 gigs of RAM. I'll just go ahead and see if I, it's easy enough to show you here. So about this Mac. Memory. So let's see here. Memory. So it is an older Mac, but I tell you what, it, it kicks ass. So late 2009, oh sorry, Core i5, not i7, um, but 20 gigs of memory. This thing screams. I've had people come over here with newer machines, and these things just keep on kicking on. Uh, also, it's a 32 inch HD TV that was given to me. Um, I essentially just piggybacked off the back of this Mac. So if you see, I drag my mouse across. So it's just a second screen for my iMac. It's really great, uh, helps out. I usually just run my email off the right hand side and do all my work off the left. So uh, that's my setup for my main office. Now, as you can see, I've got a few remotes under here. So on the left, that's just aircon. Don't need to worry about that. So now, I have a just a pretty basic Panasonic audio system here. So if I turn that on, it's just to my right. So as I go to my right, you'll see I have a little boom box there with, uh, as you can see, there's a little white box just to the left of it there with a the green light on it. That is an Apple Airport Express. And that plugs in with a three and a half mil audio jack to the top. You can see a green plug on the top right hand side of the Panasonic there. So that's just airplay speakers for me. So I'll give you a demonstration. So let me get set up here. Okay, so. So for example, I'll just get a bit closer here so you can see what I'm doing. So for example, uh, I was listening to Audio Slave. Now, down my volume here. Okay, you could probably hear it very quietly, music in the background. If I drop down here, I have my computer, my bedroom Apple TV, kitchen speakers, and lounge room Apple TV. So it's really cool. I can just click on that. Hopefully they don't get blasted. That's usually just a once-off, that slow connection speed, but 
can see the volume adjusting. The cool thing about this is I can click multiple and I can stream to the computer, to the bedroom, to the lounge room. They will all turn on because they're all switched off. So that'll go ahead uh, using the Bonjour protocol. That'll flick everything on in the house and I can play one song across the whole house uh, in synchronous. It is the coolest thing ever. So um, that's just something that Apple can only bring you. So I'd highly recommend uh, investing in a couple of Apple TVs and a couple of um, airport expresses. So uh, I'll go to the next stage. Okay. Okay, so we're in the lounge room just to give you a quick rundown of what I've got going on here. So as you can see just in front, um, I have a Sony 65 inch 4K ultra high definition TV. This thing is an absolute beast. Uh, the picture quality is so good. The refresh rate's awesome. I play a lot of games, so um, there's zero input lag, zero noticeable input lag. Let me rephrase that. Um, as you can probably see, just down to the bottom there, um, that's a little Mac Mini I've got hiding under there. So Mac Mini is used as my Plex box and just for a other, bunch of other services uh, that I run inside my house, that's my home server. Um, now you can see down the bottom there, I've got a, let me just zoom in, Xbox 360 with an X key um, and my PS4. So that's just a digital set top box in the middle and my PS4. Um, for my sound, I use these Logitech speakers. Now they're actually PC speakers, but they're 5.1. You get three at the front, two at the back, obviously, and a, I believe it's a 10, maybe a 12 inch woofer. You can see it's quite big. And the thing I like about this unit is it takes optical in and DTS and Dolby Digital 5.1. So um, thankfully, this TV outputs everything that goes into it through the optical in 5.1. So I hook everything in through HDMI and it all outputs through one channel to the Logitech and it's a very basic setup. Um, moving a bit closer, I'll see if I can get a better image here. But basically, <clears throat> I have uh, an Apple Airport Extreme. You can't really see much of it here. But this is an Apple Airport Extreme and I've got Telstra Cable uh, Ultimate, which is a 100 megabit service. So, um, more or less, the, the cable modem, it's one of these wireless all-in-one things that Telstra try to push onto you and um, for the basic home user, it's okay, but for me, it's garbage. So, more or less, it's a dumb modem. It just takes the internet and it's in bridge mode straight to the uh, Apple Airport Extreme and the Air Airport Extreme takes care of all the DHCP, the natting and everything. Uh, best device I could have asked for. It is so strong, robust and it, it rarely ever needs work and I'll go through quickly um, in a moment some of the basic setup features and how to configure it. I thought I'd take the opportunity to just show you this metallic arm I have holding a spare iPad I own. Uh, it's just an iPad 2, 16 gig with 3G, uh, more or less, it just sits there uh, and it's just my, I guess, run around. Uh, when I'm in bed, I use it to watch uh, Plex, do a bit of browsing or a lot of YouTube. Um, I use the AirPlay a hell of a lot on this because I have a Apple TV, but um, basically I have an iPad and if I am gaming, from my bed, because I have the uh, PlayStation TV, I can also utilize this. So it's been a, uh, a good a good help. So just giving you a perspective of the uh, TV. We have a 48 inch Sonic, just a cheapie I got from JB Hi-Fi. Um, done it on the Dodge, but I have a sneaky little Apple TV box up there if you can see and uh, just to show you one other thing I haven't completely hooked up yet. Uh, 
PlayStation TV. So, for those of you who uh, don't know what this is, uh, basically what you do is you hook up, obviously, power, uh, Ethernet or Wi-Fi, but in this case, you definitely want Ethernet and HDMI. The rest of it I don't use. Um, that USB port's for connecting the PS4 controller. But basically what it does is, um, say for example, someone is in my lounge room and they're watching um, TV and uh, I want to play PlayStation. Um, so I can sneak away into here and I can bring my PS4 controller and uh, more or less it'll stream over Ethernet or Wi-Fi but as I said for anything like FPS gaming I play a lot of Destiny, Call of Duty and Battlefield for anything less than that um, yeah you need you need wi uh, Ethernet so but basically it just streams the gaming um, to this TV and uh, it's awesome you just connect the uh, PS4 controller via USB to the box once it's connected you can disconnect the wire and play wirelessly and it looks great, it only streams at 720p, but really, at this, at that point, like, who cares? At least you get to still game in another room. So, uh, we'll go back into the, uh, office. Okay, so as I was discussing, I was going to explain to you how the, uh, Apple Airport Extreme and Airport Express all connect together, and, uh, how having, as you can see, pretty much, I have everything Apple, how having everything Apple connects and just plays so well together. As an IT guy, let me give you a bit of advice. When people start bad-mouthing Apple, you, you, it's expensive, it's this, it's that, it works, it just works. So, when I go out all day on site and I'm fixing people's problems and rebuilding machines, servers, doing whatever, I wanna come home and I want things to just work. I don't wanna fix my own gear. So, if you buy Apple stuff, I'm going to sound like a total fanboy, even though I am, it's just going to work. So, I'm going to go ahead and show you this uh, airport utility. So, it's a pretty standard interface, so more or less the internet in this globe is represented by my cable modem, which has been switched into bridge mode. So, as you can see, it has a strong line here, so that's indicating a wired connection. So, that has an ethernet cable from my cable modem, ethernet cable into the airport extreme. So the Airport Extreme basically takes care of everything. Um, that does, as I said, it does DHCP, it does NATing, it does everything you could think of. It does all the res reservations and things like that. Um, so you've got one thing I like, it shows you the wireless clients. So um, they're connected, the connection speed, what mode they're using, and then uh, just the base station stuff. It's got back to my Mac, you can enable that. If you don't know what back to my Mac is and you own a bunch of Apple products, you need to go and look into that. Um, actually, I will cover that in another video. Um, yeah, and then internet DHCP. So you can see it's got the Big Pond name server. That's all just taken straight from the Big Pond cable modem and then um, you create your wireless network, you do DHCP and NAT, so I've got my Plex box there which is reserved and everything else is just free for all. You can connect a disc to it via USB so you can buy an external hard drive and use it as a time machine backup which is awesome. If I was to ever do this again, I would just buy the Apple time capsule with the three terabyte hard drive in it. Um, so going back to that now, so obviously in the lounge room you saw the cable modem coming in with a wide connection straight into the Airport Extreme. So this unit on its own serves as my wireless. Um, that serves the entire house. Now, what you can do, as you can see, the Airport Express, which was the little device connected to the Hi-Fi for uh, AirPlay speakers, that is also a standalone uh, Wi-Fi unit. I could have taken this unit and connected it straight to the Big Pond internet cable and put it in this spot and it would have done the exact same thing. It would, have, it would have done the exact same job. Obviously, the Extreme has a couple of uh, benefits to it. But basically, I've connected this, and you can see the broken line here, so that's indicating it's connected via Wi-Fi, not a fixed connection, but that's fine. So essentially what it does is, I've configured this to only behave as an AirPlay device. So it's just configured as kitchen. Um, so when I go to, uh, say, do some AirPlay, let's see up here, so I've got, Oh, that's AirPlay device, so let's try it. Um, so, iTunes. 
So I've got the computer here, the bedroom Apple TV, the iMac, which is right next to me, the kitchen speakers, which is the Airport Express, and the lounge room. Same with the iPad here, excuse me. So when I flick up, AirPlay, and you can see iPad, bedroom, iMac, kitchen speakers, lounge room. So I can play audio, video to any of those devices, obviously kitchen speakers, just audio. So that's really cool, but what I can also do, say for example, these are quite close or close enough to have a very strong Wi-Fi connection. So I could set this up to be a repeater. So for example, in some people's houses, I have the internet coming in, then I have an airport extreme, and then I have say one or two, sometimes even three, depending on the situation, if their house is hardwired and I can hardwire one of these from upstairs. Uh, to one of these which is downstairs then you set this up as a repeater and you can have one two three four five six as many as you want in here and basically it all behaves as one Wi-Fi network so you can have when you search for a Wi-Fi you just have one network that comes up and you connect to it so wherever you're moving around the house the location that they're at your phone device whatever will just intelligently flick over to the closest one that has the strongest signal so even though this is connected via wireless I could still set this up as a repeater and it could repeat Wi-Fi because it is quite close to my airport extreme. It's probably about less than eight meters, but there's one wall. But this is closer, this one is closer to the backyard. So basically I could use this to repeat the Wi-Fi signal back to the lounge room and push it out to the backyard. So things like that, but as you can see, it's so easy to uh, configure. And once you bring a new one into the house, all you do is literally plug it into power and you just click other Wi-Fi devices and it will just hit, click here and then it will just ask you, do you want it to join the network? Do you want it to be speakers? Do you want it to do X, Y, or Z? Super smart, best, they got the best stuff, hands down. Okay, as I mentioned, uh, I am an IT guy by trade, so I generally go around and do a lot of jobs, whether it's on site or working from home, but I do like any kind of, Typical tradesmen, I do have a, uh, a working bag. So this is my kit, this is what I take on site. This is generally what will get uh, my customers out of most troubled situations. So I thought just for giggles, I would run through uh, what I have inside my bag and what tools I carry around with me day to day and what generally, as I said, fixes most problems. So um, pretty simple, as you can see, pretty standard bag. Um, MacBook's not in here, but obviously this is just a, 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 a space here just for the uh, MacBook Air which goes in. So let's uh, let's have a look inside. So um, to kick off, first of all, very very simple, cheap toolkit. So um, as you can see, small set of screwdrivers. of Allen keys, another screwdriver with adjustable bits, wire, wire snips, uh, side cutters, pliers and some tweezers. This kit will literally get you out of almost any situation. I'd say 90% of the time I use this kit and it cost me a whole $20. So go up to your local hardware store, grab a kit. Now I always carry around with me uh, a spare keyboard because you never know when you're going to get a keyboard but it's just a brand new Apple wireless keyboard yeah yeah you can say I'm a puppy because I have everything Apple and I I just you know I, I'm very particular I like things a certain way I like things to work and I like Apple so that's what I'm going with um, there are a lot of cheaper alternatives that you could have gone with but none of the cheaper alternative keyboards are that slim are that um, easy to get around when you have limited space in a bag and generally most of the time I go around to sites on a motorbike so um, obviously the less weight I can carry the better. A um, couple of brand new power boards. Always keep power boards. This is an unusual one. Cyber clean. Um, I use this a lot just to clean um, keyboards and, and phones and stuff. It's like a uh, like a goo, like, I don't know how else to explain it, maybe like Play-Doh, but it's actually pretty cool. So you can see it's just like this goop. And you're not supposed to break it, but basically you mush it 
into the keyboard and it pulls out all the junk from underneath the keys. You do it to your phone, you do it to everything. It's got like a bunch of um, disinfectant and stuff in it and it says it kills 99.999% of germs with a big asterisk on the side. So um, I do use it a lot and uh, I do get a lot of customers onto it because I myself, I'm a bit of a clean and neat freak, so I like things to be uh, as hygienic as possible. Um, so a bunch of adapters, so I've got two ADSL line filters, um, two Ethernet uh, adapters for my MacBook Air. They both use uh, the Thunderbolt port, no, it's the... Uh, I can't remember the name of the port right now off the top of my head. And a VGA adapter as well for display out. Couple of, a set of Torx screwdrivers. Um, I use these for getting into the Xbox or any devices that have uh, security screws. Spare mouse. Ah, uh, why don't I have an Apple mouse? Well, that's a good question. Well, I do have a spare Apple Bluetooth mouse for that matter, but generally most of the times when you're working on a server or a machine, um, just having a USB mouse is much easier than connect connecting a Bluetooth dongle or something like that. It just saves time. Um, let's see here. Two black ethernet cables. I think they're about five meters each. You just never know when you're going to need them. An array of chargers, so I've just got a charging brick from an iPhone 6 Plus, um, an old school iPhone, iPad charger, uh, me micro USB for the Samsung phones, and a standard uh, Thunderbolt connection. Lightning, sorry, let me rephrase that, lightning. Um, just a cheapy CD wallet, uh, I got off eBay for about $6 delivered, if that. Um, just has a bunch of software that I would need, not that I use CDs much, but um, especially when you're working on servers, it's, uh, it's really handy. Just an old school Netgear switch, nothing special. Just a uh, five port switch. Just sometimes it gets you out of trouble, you never know when you're going to need it. Even just for temporary use to patch into a network, there's only one ethernet port out the wall and it's, you need the machine and your machine connected at the same time. It just saves you having to do a bunch of crap. You can just plug that in and plug whatever else in, in you need for the time being. So that can be a big lifesaver. Coming down to the tail end of my work bag, one thing that every IT guy should have, cable tester. So. Uh, does uh, phone cable and uh, ethernet cable. So basically you just have a on and then a, a slow test and then a regular test. So um, difference is it's, it has the same test but the slow one just goes through much slower. Um, more or less the same thing at the end of the day but great tool especially when you're uh, contracting electricians to come wire up a customer's house. I've had this a few times. I've had electricians come out um, I've needed them to do data points in uh, a new client's house, whether it's their home or their office, and um, the ethernet ports just aren't working or they're giving me funny IP. Sometimes an ethernet cable, when you plug in, uh, it will show on the devices that there is a connection there, but it just will give uh, a bogus 169 IP address. This is where the cable tester comes in. So it will actually test each twisted pair individually to see if it's gonna work see if it's sending a clean data signal. And surprisingly, you can find these on eBay for about $7. They're cheap as chips. Go and grab one. Um, that's pretty much it. I've just got a bunch of uh, little cable ties for cable management, tape measure, you never know when you're gonna need it. SIM card, just if any customer ever needs that. Uh, some batteries, a spare USB stick, and just uh, some of my business cards there. And last but not least, a MacBook Air charger. Believe it or not, I have never ever used this. I have never been on site with my MacBook Air and needed to recharge my battery. That thing will go all day. So this is just in case of emergency or in case anyone else needs to use it. But uh, 
Honestly, I've worked eight, nine hour days on a MacBook Air straight and it's never run out of battery. It's never let me down. Another reason why I buy Apple stuff. Now, not that I ever use this and I hate using these, but we have crimping tool for making network cables or just kind of some cables aren't crimped properly and you just can push them in and tighten them up a little bit. Wire strip, so just slot the wire into which gauge you want. Use your finger, spin it around, take it off, and the, the casing of the Ethernet cable or whatever cable you're using will come off. And cloning tool. Um, I never really needed much anything to do with these, but recently I had a job where I was dealing with an old school phone system and I needed to patch in an ADSL connection. Um, this came in very, very handy. So I believe that's the end. And just a, another uh, 64 gig USB stick. And that's basically it. That is everything you will need to be a hardcore IT guy.